Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITK Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And today I have brought a very interesting problem uh, from Shashi Bhushan Tiwari. Some of my students are facing a difficulty. So I decided to do a video on this and I will be presenting a very cute little solution. And I will also be teaching two very important concepts in this. So please stay tuned until end. And uh, in the end, uh, I would also like to mention about the solution uh, by a student who has also brought presented an elegant uh, solution for uh, this problem so please stay tuned till end okay so here's the problem okay so Shashi Bhushan Tiwari problem number 110 there's a problem regarding uh, n number of collisions and then finally what happens when n tends to infinity a large number of small identical blocks each of mass m are placed on a smooth horizontal surface so so many blocks are there and they're they're lying on a smooth horizontal surface with distance between two successive blocks being small d. So each block uh, interblock separation is small d. Okay. The constant force F is applied on the first block as shown in the figure. Assuming the collisions to be perfectly inelastic. Find the speed of the moving blocks after n collisions. To what value does the speed tend if n is very very large. Okay. So if you want you can give it a try. And I will get into my solution right away. So before presenting my solution i'd like to teach you two very important concepts that are very useful and that, that can save a lot of time so what are the concepts that i'm going to use so first concept that i'm going to use is that work done by pseudo forces in center of mass frame is always zero why is that see let a be the acceleration of center of mass so we i'm working from the center of mass frame now and let's say a is the acceleration of center of mass so what will happen to the uh, power developed by all the pseudo forces acting on different different particles. So let's say uh, Mi is the mass of ith particle and Vi is the velocity of ith particle as seen from the center of mass frame. So what uh, what happens to the pseudo force? So Mi A becomes the pseudo force. Why? A is the uh, acceleration of Cm. So uh, if you want you can put a minus sign over here. So uh, because pseudo force is negative of mass times acceleration. So I forgot to put a minus sign but anyway I'm going to prove it to be zero so i'll just put a minus sign everywhere okay so minus mi into a is the uh, fi that is pseudo force on the ith particle and let's say vi is the velocity of ith particle as seen from center of mass so what is the power developed? so mi a minus mi a is the force on ith particle so force dot velocity is the power so this is the summation of all the power developed by the pseudo forces okay and you take minus a common outside from this and then it becomes sigma mi vi Please bear in mind this vi is the velocity of ith particle as seen from cm frame, right? So what you can do now, you can divide the whole thing by a capital M, that is the total mass of the system and you can uh, multiply here by uh, capital M. So this expression is equivalent to this expression and now this is what? Now this is becomes the velocity of center of mass, right? But from what frame? We are seeing everything from center of mass frame, so this becomes velocity of center of mass as seen from itself. And what is that? That's obviously zero, right? Velocity of center of mass as seen from itself is zero. So uh, this must be equal to zero. So I can say that power developed by all the pseudo forces in the center of mass frame is always zero. And there's a very important fact that I'm going to use in my solution. Another important fact that I'm going to use in my solution is that is summation of work done by internal forces is independent of frame of observation. Whenever I have a system it doesn't matter what kind of system. So if you take the summation of uh, work done by all the internal forces, then that summation of work done by all the internal forces will not depend on the frame from which you are observing. Okay. Uh, so uh, please note that it's not zero. Sometimes students think that the work done by internal forces is zero. That's not true unless uh, it's a perfectly rigid body. But internal forces can do some work. Okay. But the total work done uh, by internal forces uh, when considered over the summation over the entire system that must be zero. Now why is that? Now consider two particles one and two. Let us say this is particle one and this is particle two and they're exerting some internal forces on each other. Let's say F21 is the force on 2 because of 1 and F12 is the force on 1 because of 2. So bear in mind that F12 and F21 must be equal and opposite, right? Why? Because Newton's third law, they have to be action and reaction pairs, right? Let's say the velocity of this one is V1 from some frame. It doesn't matter what frame. So let's say instantaneous velocity of this is V1 and instantaneous velocity of this is V2. So what is the power developed by this action reaction pair? So power developed by this action reaction pair P1 plus P2 is f12 dot v1 plus f21 dot v2 so that's the power developed by the pair now since f21 is minus of f12 so i can just take f12 dot common 
and it becomes v1 minus v2. So v1 minus v2 is subtraction of velocity of 1 from velocity of 2 and that becomes nothing but v12 and uh, velocity of one particle as seen from the other particle that should not be depending on frame. Subtraction of velocities will not depend on the frame, right? So v12 it's the same depend no, uh, no matter what the frame because essentially v12 when you write it means velocity of one as seen from the particle two. So it doesn't matter from what frame you are seeing v1 what frame you are seeing v2 it doesn't matter. So v12 is frame independent. Therefore, power developed by internal forces has to be because all internal forces are action reaction pairs, right? So, power developed by internal forces when summation is taken over the entire uh, system, then power is independent of the frame, right? Okay. So, that's what I have written. Now, V1 minus V2 is relative velocity of particle 1 from the frame of particle 2, thus independent of the frame of observation, right? Now, coming to the current problem. So, what is the displacement of center of mass? I am going to do everything from center of mass frame. Uh, so, let's see what is the displacement of center of mass from ground frame at the nth collision. See, the first block would have moved a distance n times d, the second block would have moved a distance n minus 1 times d and so on, right? So, you know that uh, displacement of center of mass is sigma mi delta xi divided by sigma mi, right? So, that's what I've done. So, first mass n into d, so second mass n minus 1 into d and so on. So, this is the uh, summation of AP in the numerator sigma mi delta xi divided by total mass. So, at the nth collision uh, n plus first uh, block would have just become part of the system, right? It would have just collided with the n plus first mass. So, that's why n plus 1 times m, okay? So, if you just simplify take the summation of the AP and you uh, cancel off m everywhere. Uh, so, this is what you get and then uh, you use the AP formula. So, this becomes finally simplify if you if you do the simplification the, the displacement of center of mass happens to be n times d by 2, right? So, the, if uh, at the nth collision the center of mass of the system including the n plus first mass is nothing but uh, n, n d by 2, okay? So, uh, from center of mass frame, this is the displacement of the center of mass and the displacement of this block from ground frame is nd and the displacement of center of mass from the ground frame is nd by 2. So, what is the displacement of this block from the center of mass frame? So, that is nd minus nd by 2. We will see that. Okay. So, now the, uh, CM, from the cm frame, the displacement of leftmost leftmost block is nd minus nd by 2. Why? Because cm got displaced by nd by 2 and leftmost block got displaced by nd from ground frame. So, relative displacement is nd by 2. So, what is the work done by this real force uh, from the cm frame? That becomes f into nd by 2, right? And now, uh, from the center of mass uh, frame, after at the nth collision, whole thing has become a rigid body and we can, you do not see any kinetic energy in the cm frame, right? So, change in kinetic energy is 0. So, uh, what I can say by work energy theorem, work done by this external force F plus work done by internal forces must be 0. Which means what? Work done by internal forces must be equal to minus NFD by 2. Why? Because this is NFD by 2. So, internal force work must be exactly cancelling this, right? Because change in kinetic energy from the CM frame is 0, okay? So, now we can also apply work energy theorem from the ground frame. So, if you apply work energy theorem from the ground frame, what is the work done by F? So, from ground frame, the displacement is N times D. So, this is the work done by uh, external force F and D and work done by internal forces. Remember, it is independent of the frame and we calculated it using the concept of center of mass. So, work done by the internal force forces from the ground frame must also be equal to minus NFD by 2, right? Because that's what we got from the uh, using the CM frame. So, now, you apply the work energy theorem. So, what does, what should this be equal to? This should be equal to change in kinetic energy as seen from the ground frame. So, what is the uh, uh, kinetic energy from the ground frame? Initial was 0 and final is, so let's say velocity is V, final. Uh, so, total mass moving is now n plus m, uh, n plus 1 into m. So, half n plus 1 m into V square is equal to this and you just now rearrange and we get the velocity as root of nfd upon n plus 1 m, okay? So, I hope you like this uh, beautiful method and obviously the second part is easy though. Now, you just make n tend to infinity. So, n upon n plus 1 goes to 1 and this is the final answer that you get, okay? So, that was my solution. I hope you liked the solution. Apart from my solution, uh, Akanch Khandelwal also presented a beautiful uh, solution. Uh, he, I mean, he is not given the full solution, but he has uh, proposed the steps and I really liked his method. Uh, it's a kind of recursion and then trying to use the limit that uh, when 
n is tending to infinity the velocity at the nth step should be equal to velocity at the n plus first step so if you want you can have a look at Akash's solution i'll give the link to the community post and you can see his proposal so that's it uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and uh, uh, and please share this video as much as possible through WhatsApp, Discord, Telegram or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students. And uh, most importantly, if you have not already subscribed to uh, my channel, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.